Carbon Steel Walk is designed to cook things hot and fast. Flash searing and things like that. Carbon Steel, it's got a lower carbon content than cast iron, which makes it less brittle. So you could use a thinner piece of it and achieve the same results. So you kind of get like all the same great cooking benefits that you get from cast iron, and it's a little less weight. When Smithy approached us and asked if we could make them a, a wok. That brought us to studying wok makers, uh, primarily in China. We don't have lots of craftsmen available that can sit around you know, doing this for, for hours and hours and hours. So we landed on a machine that is primarily used in the making of one-off kind of sculptural sheet metal pieces. It's a reciprocating hammer. It's used in aerospace and it's used in the automotive industry and just super, super precision sheet metal work. The head is going up and down the same amount and then we can open and close that gap with the foot control. So as it's pulsing, you're able to get some really precise control to manage and measure what you're doing as you do it. Specifically with the walk, uh, the cold process that we do is bending that metal. So as I'm starting, and I'm starting with just that flat disc, so I really want to move in a symmetrical pattern. From there, I'm making quick judgments with every single strike of the hammer to manipulate it and move it where I want it to be you're really paying attention to the surface and the surface changes, how it's arcing, what the radius is. You need to know what it looked like before that blow, what it looked like during that blow, and what it looked like after that blow. And it slowly begins to create this hemisphere. Now we're going at 600 beats a minute. That hammering motion is making the material stronger because it's planishing the surface of the steel. This machine was designed for, you know, making a, a fender on like a 1965 Ferrari or something. And somebody's got to sit there and shape it by hand and by eye. We adapted it to make walks. I'd never really done a whole lot of sheet metal work before we began doing this cookware for Smithy. I came out with a lot of things that you know, looked like wavy potato chips. So as I began to experiment with the hammer and play with it until finally I got a little system down that was like, ah, this is, this is it, this is the piece. Carbon steel is just another way of describing steel. Carbon is one of the main alloys in it. We don't mass produce iron anymore in America. So this is, you know, kind of the closest thing. It's gonna be the most valuable. For the handles, that's what we're using is just a mild steel. We're starting off with a blank of three quarter inch round steel stock, and we're gonna shape it into the main handle. So forming a handle, we heat them up in the forge, and we start to draw out the neck of the handle, if you will, using one of our forging hammers. Now we've created an hourglass sort of shape. We take that little nub and we put it in our bottom die under another larger forging hammer. We splat out the cusp for the handle. And that's the portion that then gets holes in it and gets riveted to the side of the pan. Then we stretch out the handle portion and, and we actually shape the part that your hand is gonna hold. This is all done using a technique called open die forging, which is forging using a power hammer. And it's all about how you hold the material in between those dies to get whatever result you, you want to get. We get it to the shape we want, and we want to leave some hammer marks in there. We don't want to make it too smooth because it gives it a sense of comfort. It gives the evidence of the, of the hand work that went into it. Put it back in the fire, heat it up, then we put it on the anvil, and then we stamp the Smithy Quail logo into the end of, of the handle. So now we're just shaping the handle. And this is just like old fashioned way. I started dabbling around in metalwork when I was in high school. I went to college, you know, I got a job in corporate America, did that for a couple years, absolutely hated it. Then the, the economy crashed. I went to a school for blacksmithing in uh, Hereford, England. Then I traveled around Europe a little bit, parts of the Middle East, just working for people, learning the craft of blacksmithing. 
And then when I felt I knew enough, I opened up shop. Eight years now, and we're making all sorts of different things. On a molecular level, when we heat it, those, those molecules relax more. And then as you beat on it and as it loses heat, those molecules uh, come back together and get stronger. So you gotta move quick. Every blow of the hammer is sucking heat out of that. The air around it is sucking heat out of it. Your body is absorbing some of that shock as well. You wanna do as little of that as possible. We tell how hot it is by its color. Bright yellow, almost a white heat. That's gonna be the hottest that it is. And you wanna work at that heat as much as you can because it's gonna move a lot easier. Traditionally, a blacksmith is someone who works in iron and steel. Smithing is someone who shapes metal. And then the black part of blacksmithing refers to the black metals, which are iron and steel, called the black metals because at room temperature, they appear black. As you're lifting up that hammer, you're looking to see where do I wanna place this next blow? How hard do I need to hit? Do I need to change the angle of my hammer? How are you standing? And you really have to pay attention to every moment and every second. This tool here is called an arbor press. Then just give it a pull and it pops a hole in there. There you have it. Got our holes ready. All right, so now that we've got our holes punched in, we're ready for the final bit of shaping. I'm getting in that last little bit of curve and that's what's gonna allow it to attach to, to the body of the wok at the right angle. Annie is, is the head of the cookware department. Annie came through the American College of Building Arts. She was sort of a, a rising star in, in the blacksmithing program at the college and she started with us as an intern. All right, so now we've got all our parts made. We've got the body of the wok, we've got the long handle and then we've got what we refer to as the helper handle. I'm gonna start here by making sure everything's lined up well. She came through a, a path of classic blacksmithing training, but what I soon found is that Annie actually had a knack for organization and management and all the things that are really required to actually manage a large-scale project. And I'm noticing it's a little bit crooked, so I'm gonna use a real fancy technique here. Just whack it on the side of the table. All right, yeah, so I got that nice and in line where I want it. I'm gonna make sure everything looks good and happy this way. I wanna make sure that the balance is fairly good. And there it is, there's your wok. Carbon steel wok is to use in a really unique way that other pieces of cookware aren't because you're not just using the bottom, you're using the sides, and you got different heat zones. As you're heating it up and cooling it down rapidly, it is expanding and contracting, but it's really forgiving, and you can kind of use it and abuse it, and it'll, it'll still be okay. After the wok is assembled, the next step is it goes to seasoning. It goes into a big commercial oven, and it's heated up for like 30 to 40 minutes at about 500 degrees. This changes the color really like deep bronze color and grapeseed oil is applied. Thin, thin layer of grapeseed oil, which adheres to the surface. Then it goes back into the oven, gets heated back up uh, for another hour, comes out and does, a, does another cycle of that. The purpose of the seasoning is it protects the cookware from rust and it provides a natural non-stick surface. And through use, the, uh, the, the layer of seasoning just gets, gets deeper and deeper and richer and richer over years and years and years of use, it contributes to the flavor profile of the things you cook in the pan. Our challenge for this product has been how to scale up a handmade process and not lose the artisan craftsmanship. So the fact that we've been able to scale it up and I can still take a lot of pride in the fact that each piece is handcrafted, I do love the act of blacksmithing. I love the act of forging. There's something about, about working with an element of danger kind of forces you to be present with what it is you're doing. That for me is really sort of meditative. 